Right, Welcome everyone. Today. This is the IQB2 Transmark Foundation community meeting for May of 2020. My name is Rudy Potenzone and I will uh, be the host for the meeting today. As usual, the meeting is being recorded and the slide deck and the uh, recording will be posted on our website within a day or two. And the recording will also be posted to our the foundation's YouTube channel where you can find it and all of the uh, other recordings from previous uh, community meetings. If you have uh, questions, we're in a, a regular Zoom uh, meeting today. And uh, if you have questions, we would appreciate it if you could uh, post it in the chat window and we'll try to get to them um, uh, along the way. Uh, but uh, we will have a discussion time at the end of the, of the session. Hi, Rudy, thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Um, thank you for joining. Um, I can't believe it's the middle of May. I mean, in one hand, it feels like the world has like stopped. Um, on the other hand, it feels like things have really um, started to speed up, uh, particularly with everybody that's working in the clinical research space focusing on COVID-19. So it's, uh, it's, kind of, it's kind, of a, kind of a strange and bizarre um, time for us all. So um, but for the foundation, I think um, lots of uh, forward movement and um, I'm excited to, to jump into this agenda. So you can go to the next slide and we can the drum roll, please. We can welcome our two new board members um, to the foundation. Um, I want to introduce uh, Chi Li, Dr. Chi Li, um, who is a physician executive um, at Inner Systems. Um, Chi, I actually worked with Chi many years ago at Partners Healthcare. He was the product manager over our longitudinal medical record product, which was like the first ambulatory. Um, medical record uh, system probably in the country. Um, this was before a lot of the, the vendors had uh, developed this type of thing. So he has extensive experience in product um, management, product development. Um, he is currently at um, Inner Systems um, working as a, a product uh, innovator. He uh, has been um, an active member of the foundation um, attending our both uh, Harvard and international conferences. Um, and will be, I think, will be just an, a, a wonderful addition to our board um, because of the knowledge that he brings, his passion uh, in, in supporting translational research, um, and, and uh, also just a, a really great guy. So welcome to Chi. And um, uh, Rudy, could you introduce uh, Becky? I think you've worked with Becky um, over the years. Sure. Um, we're delighted to also announce Becky Steck from the University of Michigan. Uh, where she's the director of software solutions in the, the very uh, active um, program, nephrology program that they have here under the, the leadership of um, Dr. Kressler. Um, and uh, Becky is the, the director of their software solutions. Uh, they are a very active Transmart user uh, and have been for many years. Uh, they're a frequent contributor uh, to code uh, to, the, to the Transmart program. Uh, and uh, Becky does also sit on the Transmart um, Project Management Committee. Um, she's also been a very frequent speaker at uh, our meetings uh, and uh, always gives a very highly rated uh, talk uh, when she does, uh, has the time to actually um, visit and, and join our, our sessions. Um, and we, we welcome Becky and look forward to having her on the board. Thanks, Rudy. So you can go to the next slide. I just want to um, remind everybody um, who's on the board of directors. I'm I'm really I'm really excited about this this board. I mean, we have a, a really wonderful mix of academic um, people from the academia side of, of things. We have industry, um, a number of people from Europe. So I'm I'm really excited um, about working with this group and um, and moving forward in the future. Go to the next slide. So Harvard Symposium, this is another thing that has totally changed um, in the last, you know, really, you know, month or so because we had to move, you know, the Harvard meeting to a virtual meeting. So switching, switching to virtual was, was interesting. Um, I'm kind of excited about that. I don't, I, I love face-to-face -face meetings and I think that's where we want to go in the future, but this really gives us an opportunity to reach out to the European community and make sure that we are including, you know, everyone sort of worldwide in this. Um, we've also 
uh, change the focus of the meeting to focus on, surprise, surprise, COVID-19 and the research around COVID-19. Um, it's still a two-day meeting and um, the agenda will focus on, I think actually the next slide you can go to, well, wait, there's a virtual uh, poster session. So we're, we're really um, hoping that we can um, get people to submit posters to, um, to the meeting and we can um, kick off a, a, a virtual poster um, session and have um, some discussions around that. So the next slide, Rudy. Um, so 145 people have registered so far. We really, even though it's virtual um, and we're publishing the, the Zoom link, we'd love for you to register just so we know who's, um, who's uh, attending. Um, to, to make sure that we send out surveys and that type of thing. 145 people at this point is um, really good. Um, it, it seems like we're getting, you know, um, five or 10 people a day. So I know that number is going to shoot way up as we, uh, as we approach the, um, the June 11th timeline. So the next slide gives you, a, it's a little bit small, but it kind of gives you a synopsis of, of what the agenda is going to look like. Um, we're still tweaking this slightly, but it's, it's really like 98% um, there. Uh, there's going to be quite a, uh, a big uh, chunk of time devoted to the, um, the 4C consortium, which I know we've talked about before and I'll talk about a little bit more. But this is a, a the consortium that Zach Kohani has, um, has sort of uh, pioneered to pull together hospitals all over the world to contribute data to um, the support of, of COVID-19 research. Um, so that's gonna be pretty interesting. And he'll also talk about his phase two planning and, and what kind of what's next with that consortium. Um, and then we'll have, um, then we will talk about um, the, the Dell technology grant that we um, mentioned last um, session and kind of an overview of the projects that are part of that. Um, uh, a press release will be coming out um, sometime this week talking about um, uh, our, our uh, partnership and, and the grant from Dell. Um, we've already started this work and I'm really excited about what's going to happen um, there. Um, and then um, our, so our keynote speaker is John Wilbanks, um, that will, who will talk about uh, building an ethical data common in a pandemic environment. Um, uh, John is a great speaker, and I think that's going to be something that will be pretty exciting. And then, and then there's a, I'm not going to go over all of this. The, so there's a, then we have a, a, a number of different sessions covering uh, uh, multiple topics. At the end, though, session six is where we're going to be talking about um, our roadmaps for the, um, the foundation and a discussion around that. So um, please... Um, Please stay for that as well. And then the second day, you can go to the next slide. The second day is focused on our working groups um, and also a half day session for ACT. Um, and this is the tentative agenda that um, the ACT group has put together um, for their, their session. So I think, you know, and it, I think being a virtual meeting, you can kind of pick and choose what, what's, um, you know, what you're interested in. So we'll have this agenda finalized within um, the next week or so. So you can make sure that you, you uh, pay attention during those times um, that your session uh, of interest uh, pops up. So the next slide, I think Mike Mendez is gonna cover. So he is working on the ETL working group and the session for this at the, the meeting. So Mike, are you there? Can you unmute yourself and, and cover the slide? Yep, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. So yeah, so for the ETL working group, we talked about basically uh, doing stuff for COVID-19. And so what we're basically gonna be doing is over the next month, we're gonna be uh, de developing some type of ETL process for loading in some type of ontologies into it. And then what we're gonna be doing is uh, loading some demo data into that, whether it's with this demo set or a different demo set. We, there was talk about on the forums about using the Thinthia data set and then somehow mapping that with um, some of the released information from the Massachusetts uh, COVID-19 stuff. And then uh, we'll also have documentation about how to install this and get this up and running. And then there's uh, a Docker image that's gonna be presented also. Uh, so exciting stuff uh, for 
a lot of stuff to do in the next month, but hopefully we'll have a good uh, working group session. And uh, anyone who wants to join, we're meeting tomorrow at 11. Uh, so if you want to join, uh, ping either myself or Diane and we can get you on. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Great. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> All right, Rudy, you're on. Okay, well, I'm, I'm happy to report that after uh, a lot of hard work, um, the, the Transmar version 19 is, is ready for release. Um, there is uh, a lot of information on the release uh, at our, on the wiki page, uh, including uh, some uh, documentation. Uh, and um, we have a full install script, uh, which is uh, available so that you can uh, install it uh, just by running through the script. Uh, and uh, this is the, the first, this release is going to be is Postgres only, but the Oracle version will follow uh, within a few weeks. Uh, there are a number of, of enhancements and changes that we've talked to about uh, over the last uh, couple of months, uh, several months. Um, and uh, these uh, are all, uh, you can read about it. Uh, and uh, it is a big thank you to Peter Rice uh, and Axiomedics for their support. Uh, in um, working on this release and making it, uh, you know, getting it to the point now where it uh, is ready for release. I think that's, yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about now. I think back to you, Diane. Yeah, I'll jump in and I just, um, I'm going to get, we can go to the next slide, Rudy. Um, so this is the, uh, the 4C um, consortium. This is, again, the consortium that I mentioned um, when I was reviewing the, um, the agenda for the June meeting. Um, so th this is a, an international group of, um, for the most part, I2B2 users. So I think what Zach did is he actually casted a, a, a pretty wide net of um, folks within the US and also with, within Europe that he has worked with before um, over the years. Um, and for the most part, it's, it's, it's made up of um, organizations that have I2B2 only because um, it's easier for them to, to extract the data from I2B2. Of course, they'll, pull, they'll take data from, uh, from any source, but that was the easiest. And so they quickly, I think within like four weeks, were able to pull together um, data from, and I believe the number was 94 different hospitals. Um, and I think the number was like over 20,000 um, patients uh, with uh, uh, COVID-19 um, positive patients. Um, to do this research. And um, they, they submitted their first paper. They have a preprint um, for, for phase one that um, is out there now. You can, you can see that uh, preprint um, um, from the, the link here. Um, and they're in the process of completing um, phase 1.1. So this is something that um, is getting a lot of traction. Um, the foundation is really acting as the communication and sort of operational management um, for the consortium. Um, so like any new requests um, for, to, to join comes through the foundation and we screen them to make sure that um, the, the organization is, is it qualifies. And the only way to qualify is that you're willing to contribute data. So they're, they're definitely looking for um, more data contributors. If you're interested, the link at the bottom um, is the link to, to submit a request to join the forum. Um, usually the turnaround is, is a day or so because I'm the one managing that. Um, and they are gearing up um, the planning for a, a phase 2.0, which is going to uh, include additional uh, data types. And uh, Zach is going to talk about that at the June meeting, so you'll get more information. But certainly if you're interested to know more about this, you can get to the uh, 4C website from the foundation website. We have a link uh, uh, right on, on the front page. And certainly if your organization is interested in contributing data, um, it is aggregate data. The 1.0 1, 1 was complete aggregate data. 1.1, I think people did have to get an IRB um, approval for that. Um, it's, still, it's still aggregate, um, but I think they had to get an IRB. And um, so, so please, please join. And we have weekly calls. They're usually on Friday morning, um, and it's, it's, it's pretty exciting. I think there's like, you know, 70 people that join the call from all over the world. Um, so it's, it's a very active group, um, and I, I, it, it, a, lot, a lot of excitement, a lot of, um, 
I believe a lot of good research is gonna is gonna come out of this uh, initiative. So I'll stop there, and Rudy, I'll let you take it from here. Oh, and it's just a, a paper, the um, the preprint for the uh, for four C. Okay. So now we're going to move on to uh, our guest speakers for, for today. Um, we're uh, going to talk about one of the, the Dell projects. Uh, we, we did announce that uh, we, we've gotten a, a, a grant uh, from uh, Dell Technologies. And um, there are three projects that have been funded. Uh, they're, they're listed here. We did talk about this last time. And uh, we will be going over each of these uh, in the upcoming uh, community meetings. But today I'm, I'm delighted to, to introduce um, Keith Elliston and Peter Rice from Axiomatics who are really uh, taking the lead on, on uh, this, this effort uh, to uh, bring a public version of Transmart uh, and uh, the loading uh, public data sets uh, that are available today, uh, as well as um, asking the, the community to, to uh, use this site to, to contribute additional data sets. Uh, and so I will turn this over to Keith uh, and Peter. And um, I think they will have their own slides. Uh, Keith, are you there and Peter? Um, I'm here. Peter, are you there? <clears throat> okay, I will share. Yep, I'm here. So you should be able to share your screen. Yeah, super. Okay. Okay, let's see if that's working correctly. There we go. It's okay that? on my screen. Yep. Cool, fantastic. So thanks, uh, Rudy, for the, the great introduction. And I just have to say that uh, at Axiomedics, we're really excited about this project. Uh, we're doing a number of things in the, the COVID-19 space. And I think in particular, there's been a lot of emphasis on what's happening in the healthcare side. Um, but what we would really like to do is through this project really helps stimulate the translational research um, in the COVID-19. And that's particularly important in areas for the development of, of new therapeutics, uh, new vaccines, um, you know, new, new approaches to, to prevent disease, et cetera. And so I think bringing these data together, organizing them and deploying them in a way that makes them immediately useful to the, the translational research community is, is a, it's a great honor to do that. I'll just remind people who Axiomedics is, we're, uh, uh, we're a company that supports open source in the life sciences and healthcare. Uh, we're really focused on uh, how we can use open source uh, as a collaborative um, ecosystem for working together, open source, open data, uh, open science. Um, one of the things that we always like to emphasize is open source is more than code, it's culture. Um, we're working with the community in, in a number of ways to really um, bring open source into a sustainability mode. One of the challenges with open source is how we, we make it sustainable when, when grants complete or when projects complete, how do we keep this going and make it a resource for people to use in that uh, commercial concept, context? And so the way we do that is through providing open source uh, solutions, um, uh, open source organized distributions, and the expert network. The expert network is our network of experts in, in life sciences informatics. They're often open source software developers, data scientists, et cetera. And we've mobilized the expert network for this project uh, to bring forward a team that can, can really bring this forward very quickly and with the expertise that we need. If we define the, 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 the Transmark COVID-19 project, um, we've been working uh, very closely with the ITB2 Transmark Foundation and the Michael and Susan Dell uh, Foundation, uh, collaborating on the development and deployment of what will be a public Transmark 19 instance that is loaded with coronavirus translational data. And I'll go through what data that we are initially targeting with that and how it's going forward. Uh, the team, uh, you know me, Rudy is the, the co-PI uh, for this, this project. Peter Rice is our lead scientist and will be coordinating uh, the data curation, data loading aspects of this. Uh, we have uh, Zami Tamezjan, who is the head of infectious diseases at Mayo Clinic, um, who is working as our scientific and medical advisor. Um, helping us ensure that we have the right data, that we have the curation is appropriate, et cetera. And then Kendra Elliston here at uh, Axiomedics will be the project manager. Um, our objective uh, is several fold. Uh, the first thing we wanna do is develop a public resource uh, that we can you know, build once and deploy many times uh, that can accelerate translational research on COVID-19. 
So the goal is to, to get this up and running quickly, uh, to make it publicly available, and then distribute the resources to anyone who wants to run it internally. Uh, as a part of that, we'll be curating not just SARS-CoV-2 data as it comes out and is made available, but all the related virus translational data. We know that there's an awful lot we can learn from the past 10 to 15 years of research on uh, the MERS-CoV and the SARS-CoV uh, viruses uh, that put together with this in a resource, I think makes a, a great resource for translational research. Uh, we also want to solicit contributions from the community. Data is coming out very rapidly. Um, it ends up in the public databases very slowly. Um, I, there are ways that people uh, would like to contribute data that is pre-publication or pre-submission to, to GEO or other data sources. Uh, we're happy to work with people on that and to make that publicly available, get that curated, uh, and make this a resource, a living resource for the data as it comes, becomes available. And then finally, our goal is to host a datathon where we can really um, bring people to the, to the platform, help them engage with the data, help them understand how to use it, show some initial results, but, but really use this as a means of uh, engaging the community uh, to get involved in using this as a resource for translational research. Um, let me turn this over to, to Peter, who can take you through some of the data and the platform that's going to be deployed. Peter? I hope you can all hear me. So we've been uh, running weekly searches through GEO and pulling out all of the uh, data we can find for uh, SARS-CoV-2, which is the, the COVID-19 virus, and also um, the SARS and MERS uh, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome viruses for comparison because there's, there's some related information on each of those. Um, also, any other, um, say, SARS-related viruses that uh, don't quite fall into those categories, but we think the studies might be useful, we'll look at those. Um, also, one related study there, we'll, we'll come on to that one. Next slide, please. So this is an example of the, uh, the SARS-CoV-2 studies that we found so far. They're from four different species, mostly human, also some studies done in mouse, one done in, uh, in macaque, and also one done in ferret, which is quite common for these respiratory diseases. And so the associated study is um, gene expression in a healthy ferret for comparison with what happens when they've been infected. Uh, we'll start off with the human and the mouse ones because uh, Transmart comes with human and mouse genes by default. I think when we load the, the monkey and ferret genes, it's going to be a little bit more complicated picking genes out if they're all loaded in one instance, but we'll see how that goes. And we've got a, quite a range of the number of samples and the details of what these studies are. So we'll be making all of these data um, freely available. We'll put them up on a library server. They can be downloaded into a Transmart 19 instance. They'll also work with Transmart 16 because the, the data format is basically the same and you'll be able to upload them into your own instances and work on them locally. We'll be able to work with our instance. If you work with your own instance, of course, you can merge it with your data and we hope that you'll be able to share your data with, with everyone else and we can add that to the library as well. Uh, next slide. So it's an example of some of the, the SARS um, viral studies. Uh, we've got 40 or so of those, I think. Uh, next slide. Yeah, yeah there's some 25 uh, Middle East respiratory syndrome studies as well. Um, again, mostly human, but also some other monkey species and a few others. And next slide. So we'll be building a, a project server, which will um, set up publicly available, possibly more than one, because we have several off other offers to host. Uh, to be running Transvart 19, it'll be uh, a public server with all the studies freely available. We'll have a library server where you can download the curated data and contribute to your own data sets. We'll add links to other public COVID-19 resources. There are resources for structural biology and uh, published literature and, and other resources around and add documentation because I think a lot of the users coming to this will be completely new to Transmart and we'll add some extra guidance for them to, to lead them through what they can do with the data, which will of course be generally useful to the Transmart community. Okay, I think it's back to you, Keith. Thanks, Peter. Um, so the, the key thing we want to do is, is get 
the, the community involved. We have a core team that's engaged and is working on this. Um, but the goal here is to make this a, an open community project. You know, the ways people can get involved uh, first is to uh, participate in the curation of content. Um, if you looked at the data, there's a, a lot of RNA-seq data that's here, and we're seeing, particularly with new data coming out, um, we're getting a lot of things where people have contributed their short read data sets, but may not have actually included the um, expression analysis with the RNA-seq data. So we're looking at the need to do some reanalysis of RNA-seq data. <clears throat> We've talked with a couple of people about helping with that. Um, also curation of the clinical data for, for the various projects. Um, that often takes some time to go through and find where the clinical data is to bring it forward, get it curated into the set. And the better the curation, the more valuable the content. Uh, the second key area that people uh, can participate and get involved is contributing unpublished data. Um, it takes quite a while for data to end up in GEO, uh, and that's typically one of the last things people do when publishing their work. Um, as we've monitored things happening in, in MedArchive and BioArchive, there are a lot of really great data sets being uh, at least pre-published uh, out there. And if people have data sets that they are willing to contribute uh, directly, uh, we'd be happy to take those on and to work with people to get those curated and distributed uh, within the platform. Uh, the third is um, what we always need in, in open source projects are testers. People that will sit down and evaluate and test the curated data uh, to come back to us and let us know, way, know ways that we can improve it make it more useful, make it uh, uh, more valuable. And so that's um, looking at the you know, contributing updated curation, uh, perhaps ancillary data that relates to it, evaluating uh, some of the key analyses in Transmart uh, to make sure that they're getting the right kinds of results, if there's any issues there, uh, and then contributing uh, new analyses and new code for Transmart. If there are new analyses that make sense to do here, particularly in the context of viral genomes and things of that nature, um, those are areas that we can work together to try and, and add that capability to Transmart. Uh, fourth way is, uh, is to take the data. I think that we see this as a starting point for, for public and open source efforts, but also for proprietary and internal efforts. If you have an internal group that is doing work and your data is proprietary, I think we can add value to those data by taking the, the data that we have publicly and made available uh, and integrating that with your internal data. And so the data will be available both in, in Transmart itself. Um, it's also available to, to download from the library server. And if you need any help with that, you know, we, can, we can find ways to help you get the data into whatever platforms uh, you're working. And then finally, um, our goal is to have at least one datathon towards the end of the summer uh, to bring people together, very much like the, uh, the Michael J. Fox datathon we did a number of years ago with the neuroscience group. Uh, that effort uh, produced uh, the first set of uh, verifiable biomarkers for Parkinson's progression, which was a, a key part of a, a, about a billion dollar project in, in, uh, in Alzheimer's, I'm sorry, in Parkinson's. So uh, we'd like to get a datathon here, get people working with the data, find some really interesting ways to use the data and see what we can find, uh, particularly in the ways to accelerate uh, drug discovery, drug repurposing, uh, vaccine development, uh, and more. Uh, the timeline, uh, we're here in May. Uh, we've had our, our first uh, project kickoff and organization meeting. Uh, we had weekly meetings going forward for the core team. Um, we'll set up some various ways for people to communicate. Um, I think we're gonna put a Slack channel on the Transmark Slack, Rudy, um, and, and some things like that so people can readily uh, communicate with us and, and participate. Uh, we hope to see the initial deployment and release of curated data sets in June. Uh, we'll get those out as quickly as we can. We can. Uh, we'll certainly have a second release in July, and our goal will be to have incremental releases um, after that. And then to plan in the August-September uh, timeframe for the initial datathon, which of course we will do remotely and virtually, um, I think given the, the state of where we are with COVID-19. So our goal is to, to hit, the, hit the ground running. We've already done that uh, and get some very useful resources out in the, in the short term and then build this into a community-based effort as we go. Uh, I just wanna say thank you to a number of key people. Uh, David Diamond from Dell uh, is critical to this effort, has been great in discussing it and helping formulate the ideas and bring it to fruition. Um, also helping with the funding from the, from the Dell Foundation. Uh, Rudy Potenzone from the ITB2 Transmark Foundation, who is co-PI on the project, has been uh, incredibly valuable in thinking through this and bringing it forward. Uh, Peter Rice, as always, is the Transmark Maven. Uh, he 
uh, not only has brought the Transmark 19 forward and, and done a, a huge number of, of bug fixes and, and uh, modifications in the Transmark 19 code, uh, but as an expert in putting things up, he was in fact um, the key lead scientist behind the neglected diseases Transmark instance that we put up for the Open Source Pharma Foundation. Uh, Zami Tanezjian, um, who is uh, heads up infectious diseases at Mayo Clinic, uh, has been a key thought leader in helping us think through this and helping us evaluate data make sure we're bringing the right kind of data forward, that our curation is appropriate from a medical perspective and more. Uh, the micro and Susan, I put them the wrong way around, uh, Dell Foundation for funding the project, and the ITB2 Transmark Foundation uh, for working with us to make this work and, and to bring it into reality. So thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Thank you, um, Keith. Can I just, I just wanna make one um, correction here that's uh, important, the grant funding for this actually came through the Dell Technology Office for Social Innovation. Oh. Um, and so I, uh, we're, we're grateful for, uh, for Dell um, and, um, and, the, and that group that funded this. Thank you. What was that again, Diane? Because I want to fix my slides for future reference. Yeah, the funding, the funding actually came through Dell Technology Office of Social Innovation. Okay, well, that's, um, thanks, thanks, Keith. Uh, and um, I that's uh, the content that we had to present, uh, but now it's so uh, we can open up to discussion. So, if anyone has a question they'd like to ask, um, at this point you can uh, jump in and unmute yourself, I believe, uh, or uh, put a question in the chat window. I think people are suffering from Zoom fatigue. <laughs> Maybe, it might be. How many people are suffering from Zoom fatigue? Raise your hand. <laughs> Hi, uh, this is Mark Abagian from USC. I have a question about 1712A, and I was wondering if you recommend installing that from scratch or upgrading from 1709C. Uh, so if you already have 09C installed, there's an upgrade path, which is basically uh, replacing the WAR file and then running through a bunch of SQL statements. And then that should upgrade you to uh, 12a and there's also a new web client even though it might be okay great thank you very much yep super and if you go onto the website itp2.org slash software there's a couple of pdf files that we created one for the install and one for the upgrade essentially documenting the full names and kind of great thank you very much yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining. And um, and please join the meeting in June. I, I'm really excited about that agenda. And I think um, I think you're going to learn a lot. And um, it, I mean, it will be recorded, so it'll be there for you. But um, I think hearing it and, and having um, an interaction with um, the group, we, we just got, I think, about five more registrations while we we're on the phone. So um, so I think that I think it's going to really I think it's going to fill up. And I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. So um, everyone stay safe. And I hope you're, I hope wherever you are, your, your towns and are opening up a little bit. We're actually able to get our haircuts next week. So I'm pretty excited about that. And um, wish you all a good day. Bye everyone. <laughs>